Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Wright Burroughs' adventurous book. You cannot obey orders. Put down your rifle. Oh, all right. Now, follow me to the second hut. We are more or less prisoners. Follow you and submit to the further indignity of being bound, I suppose. I think not. I don't think they need to bind us. They outnumber us a hundred to one. They have our rifles. What more could they want? Right, Philander. But Dardo seems to know them. All we have to do is submit carefully, and everything will turn out all right. Then perhaps Monsieur Clayton has a suggestion of value. A time when my suggestion was of value has passed. I would have fought it out. Then, my impetuous friend, your head, my head, the heads of all of us would soon be adorning those so sharp looking spikes of the stockade. And Monsieur Clayton, we would not have rescued Miss Jane. Well, what's the difference? Here we are being herded into a dirty hut. And we haven't found Jay. True. We have not found the young lady. But I think once a countryman of yours named Gay said something that is very true, while there is life, there is hope. Death, we could be of no assistance to Mademoiselle Jay. But alive, we cannot tell. We may be able to help. Uh, uh, they, they are certainly being lax about guarding us. I'll say, he, by the way, down low, uh, what did you say? And uh, what did the hit man say to you? I merely greeted him. And before I could tell him what we had come for, he said, the white man's sad you have come to look for is not here. He what said, else? He said, then Jane must be here. The very fact that he mentioned proves to me, my friend, that we have blundered and she is not here. If Mademoiselle Jane had been here, the headman would have said nothing, nothing at all. He would have waited for the chief to come back. But if Jane hasn't been here, how can they even know of her existence? And that we're searching for her? It may well be one of those things, my friend, that we civilized people do not understand. Ah! Or, for all we know, some of these blacks may have been watching you at the hut for some time. Morning sun shining between the serried ranks of giant trees filled the jungle depths with pools of liquid gold. The stream winding its way to the waterhole gleams like the surface of a mirror. The hard, bright blue of the sky is softened by the leafy fringed network of twisted branch and vine that form the jungle's canopied roof. 
save for the occasional call of an animal to its mate, or the frightened yelp of some smaller beast that stumbles unawares on Numa or Sheeta, the jungle is quiet. On the leafy platform in the trees, Jane Porter and Tarzan watch Sabor the lioness combing the burrs out of her cub's fluffy coat. It's hard to believe that tonight that same lioness will terrify the jungle with her roaring, and that some poor brute will have to be killed for her meal. Meal? Meal? A meal white skin is food. Food. White skin hungry, eat food. Many food, meal. One food, eat? Many food, some food, meal? Yes, white skin. You do learn quickly. At this rate, we will be able to talk without difficulty in a very short time. Time? Time? Short time. Short time, quickly. Quickly, short time. White skin, go. Come back, short time. Come back, quick. Exactly, that's right. Shh, shh, shh. Tarzan motions Jane to be quiet. He leans over the edge of the platform, listening. Jane tries to listen, but the ape man's acute hearing, his keen sense of smell, tell him of something approaching, something that Jane cannot hear. At the crackling of brush, Tarzan again more emotions to Jane. This time he points, and Jane sees far on the other side of the glade a huge black warrior, one of the party attacked by Tarzan when he rescued Philander. Tarzan leans closer to Jane. White skin arrows. Not many. Roman Ganny, many arrows. Tarzan has no word for take, but Jane understands that he intends to take some from the black. Now the warrior is below them. Without a sound, Tarzan drops full on the startled black shoulders. Ah! The black screams as Tarzan lands upon his back. Tarzan slips his arm under the warrior's chin, forces his head back. The black catches a glimpse of Tarzan's face. The strangled scream dies in his throat as he recognizes the forest devil feared by his brothers at the kraal. Tarzan pulls the quiver of arrows from the man's back, throws it behind him on the ground. He grips the black about the middle, raises him high above his head. A slight tensing of the muscles. He's going to hurl the black against the pole of the tree. No, no, no. Tarzan holds the black above his head as though he were a baby ape. Undecided, he looks up at Jane. No kill, white skin. No, no, no kill. No kill, Gomangani? No kill? Tarzan does not understand. Why should Jane not want him to kill the black? The blacks torture and kill their enemies, even their own people. The blacks are worse than Numa or Saber. Only the Gomangani torture before they kill. Again, he looks up at Jane. No kill? No, white skin. It's all very puzzling, but Jane does not want the Gomangani killed, so Tarzan lowers the black to the ground and stands watching him. The black warrior, his teeth chattering, too frightened even to scream, crashes off through the brush in desperate flight. Tarzan bends down, picks up the quiver of arrows, and swings himself effortlessly back to the platform. White skin, no kill, man, black man. Man? Man? Yes, white skin, you, white skin, man, me, Jane, woman. White skin, man. Jane, woman. Man, no kill, man. Man, no kill, woman. And Tarzan learns in speech that he is a man. Something that he had learned in writing long ago. But Tarzan is unable to associate the word man with the little bugs, as he thinks of printed letters that spell on paper M A N. In the cannibal crowd, Professor Porter, Clayton, Darno, and Philander are seated on the ground inside the hut that is their prison. You said something a moment ago, Darno, that puzzled me. Uh, you mean, my friend, about the blacks knowing the reason for our search? Yes. Uh, I must admit that I, too, uh, am somewhat uh, at a loss to understand how these blacks could know that we are searching for Jane if they had not seen her. It is just one of those inexplainable things, monsieur. They may not ever have seen Jane. But by means of their mysterious jungle magic, they would be able to describe her quite clearly. Will be able to tell you how she was captured. And if given the proper encouragement, will tell us where she is. But how, Darno? How do they do it? That I do not know. Sorcery, thought transference, telepathy, all suggestions are nothing but guess what? They know the secret and they keep it. But it's absolutely unreasonable to suppose that uneducated, illiterate, Mud dog savages can do such things. As Bishop Frito says, it is unreasonable. But nevertheless, it is true. Without doubt, we will learn from these people the whereabouts of Miss J. That is, always provided that they do not kill us first. Of course, that is a provision one cannot quite lose sight of. I, I am not one uh, who would uh, uh, call a timid man, but the uncertainty of not knowing what will happen next 
is extremely exhausting. Listen, what can have happened now? Can you make it to me? I I want to hear what is being said. He says he saw the white double of the breeze, and he has a white woman with him. Somebody's in your black magic now. 